verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. This is the word of the Lord. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints throughout Achaia. And then this is the verse we're going to concentrate on tonight. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would open up this section of your word tonight, that we might be edified by it to your praise and glory. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Now, one reason I have chosen to preach on, or preach, teach, speak tonight on 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, is because of gross neglect on my part in years past. And I'm serious about that. What I mean, that is, in the past, whenever I read the book of 2 Corinthians, I paid little, if any, attention to this verse that we're going to look at tonight. I always kind of just read it real quick and then hastened on to what came after it. So tonight I want to camp for a few minutes on this verse. I want to linger over it a bit and I want to try to delve into it as best we can and try to see if we can mine something of its riches. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 2 is a greeting Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a greeting from the Apostle Paul to the Christians in the city of Corinth where he had spent 18 months of his life founding a Christian church in that very needy city. Now tonight I just want to speak on the first three words of this verse which are grace and peace. So, biblically speaking, what is grace and what is peace? Grace is God's favor. That's what it is. And that comes out several chapters later in chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, where Paul says, and note the use of the word grace and favor here, as God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain for he says in the time of my favor I heard you and the day of salvation I helped you now is the time of God's favor now is the day of salvation favor what is that favor is God's kindness toward us and it is a kindness which we do not deserve When the Bible tells us that we are saved by grace, I'm sure you know this, it is telling us that we are saved saved by something that God does for us. We do not deserve it. We do not earn it. We do not merit it. As Paul said in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, we're by grace, are you saved through faith? That not of yourselves, It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Later on, in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 19 and 21, Paul tells us the specific thing God did in his grace in order that we might be saved. Remember these familiar verses. God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's sins against them. And as we just sang a few minutes ago, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, all of that to say that not everybody understands what grace is. I didn't understand it. Somebody had to explain it to me. When I was 14 years old, I got mixed up in a religious cult, Mormonism. 
and I seriously considered becoming a Mormon, but God in his providence sent a man into my life by the name of J. Adams. J. Adams called me on the phone one day. He, someone had told him that I was thinking about becoming a Mormon. I didn't know J. Adams, but a friend called him. He called me. How about coming over to my house and let's talk about Mormonism. So I went over there one day and uh, he asked me what Mormonism had taught me about how to be saved so I could go to heaven someday. And I said, well, the Mormons taught me that salvation was something I had to earn by trying to be good. At that point, Jay Adams asked me if I understood what the word grace meant. And I had to say, well, I guess I don't. And uh, he explained to me that grace is God's undeserved kindness, his unmerited favor. And he read me those two verses, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved by faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And when he said that word boast, he stood up from his chair, he put his thumbs under his armpits, and he started strutting back and forth like this, and he said, Tom, look at me. He says, God is not going to have anybody in heaven walking around like this and saying, I'm here because I deserve to be here. That made an impression on me. I've never forgotten that. Grace is God's unmerited favor by which we are saved. However, J. Adams didn't leave it at that. He says, Tom, you see that Mormonism and the New Testament are mutually contradictory when it comes to the question of how to be saved. I said, I see that very clearly now. He says, Tom, you need to make a choice today. Which are you going to believe? about salvation. Are you going to believe what the Mormons have been telling you? Or are you going to believe what the New Testament says, what God says in his word? And thankfully that day God graciously helped me to make the right choice. Now, grace, however, is such a rich word that it also has a secondary meaning. The Bible sometimes uses the word grace in the sense of help. H-E-L-P, help, divine help. And that meaning also comes out here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse 12, where Paul says, this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you in, holiness, in the holiness and sincerity that are from God. We have done so not according to worldly wisdom, but according to God's grace. What's he saying there? He's saying, you observe the way that I lived my life during those 18 months when I was with you in Corinth. You observe the holiness that God is building into my life and the sincerity. And I want to tell you that it was all of grace. God helped me to live the way I lived before you for those 18 months. Paul tells us about a time when he desperately needed God's help. You know, we are saved by grace when we first become Christians, but then after that, we need more grace. And this more grace is the help that he gives us to live the Christian life. And so Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and Perhaps this is the key verse in the whole book of, of 2 Corinthians. He says there in 12.7, to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses 
so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. My grace, God said to Paul, is sufficient for you. My help, Paul, I'm going to help you in this time of great weakness that you are going through. So grace is at least two things. It's God's undeserved kindness by which we become Christians in the first place. And then it's the daily help that he gives us after we become Christians, as day by day we seem to, we try to walk the Christian life by his grace, by his help. Strength is not in us, we are weak. He is strong, he helps us. Now, there's one more word here, and it's the word peace. Now, when I hear the word peace, and I dare say when you hear the word peace also, probably... We usually think of something like absence of hostilities. We think of harmony. We think of tranquility. We think of serenity. We think of calmness. And of course, all of that is true. But there's so much more wrapped up in this word peace. Grace and peace be to you, Paul says. So much more wrapped up in that word peace as it is used in the Bible. Here's why. The word peace in the New Testament is based on the Old Testament word for peace. And the Old Testament word for peace is, and I'd be surprised if most of you don't already know this, but it's shalom, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it for shalom. That's a great word. Shalom means peace. Now, what does shalom mean, though, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word shalom? It means completeness. It means wholeness. It means soundness. It means well-being. See how broad that word is, how deep that word is? Look at some of the ways that the Bible uses the word shalom. In Psalm 73, verse 3, he says, I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Literally, when I saw the shalom of the wicked. So what is one of the things that shalom is? Shalom is material prosperity. That's what part of it is. There's something else. In Psalm 4, verse 8, we have the word shalom. Psalm 4, verse 8 says, I will, lie down, I, will lie, I will lie down and sleep in peace. I will lie down and sleep in shalom. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So what's the second thing that shalom is? If the first, it's material prosperity. The second thing shalom is, is physical safety. I will lie down and sleep in shalom, physical safety. And then in Isaiah chapter 53, that great chapter about the death of the Lord Jesus, we have the word shalom in Isaiah 53, verse 5. It says that Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace, the punishment, punishment that brought us shalom was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. What is Isaiah saying there? He is saying that there is peace, get this, peace through punishment. He's saying that the Lord Jesus was punished in the place of sinners, and sinners who believe in him will have peace with God. Shalom there means a spiritual well-being. It means a right relationship with God. Now think about it. I'm almost done. If you have material prosperity, 
one of the meanings of shalom. If you have physical safety, one of the other meanings of shalom. If you have spiritual well-being, because that's the basic meaning of the word well-being in the fullest sense of that word. If you have material prosperity, physical safety, and spiritual well-being, can you think of anything else that you really need? I can't. If I have those three things, I think I have everything that I need. That, that's a rich word, peace, based on the Old Testament word, shalom. Okay, so what have we done tonight? We've looked together at the first three words of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace. I close with reading the entire verse because I want you to see, and you know this, but I want to remind you where grace and peace come from. Hear it. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that you're a Christian? Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you that you are the source, along with your Son, of unmerited favor. And Lord, the longer we live our lives, the more we see our demerits, our undeservedness. But we thank you, Lord, that you treat us not as we deserve to be treated, but in your mercy, you have given us forgiveness. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the God of peace, who sur surely does give us peace of mind and peace of heart, but so much more in addition to that. Wholeness, completeness, well-being in every sense of that word. Lord, you have lavished your grace and your peace upon us, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.